We are podcasting podcast. in another different Pod. place. Podcast. Ba, 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 Podcasty. It's the podcast. It's the end of the Edinburgh Fringe. We are on the final Saturday of the Edinburgh Fringe. It's been a long old month, old friend. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm in. I'm in ribbons. Yes, you're in. You're, you've, your voice is gone. Your sense of self is gone. There's a fucking big foot you're, being sitting on this mic. Why is your there? libido's been gone? <clears throat> no, my libido's not gone. Unfortunately. Do you find that as well? Where and I, I'm normally not the one to. Um, Bring uh, up the crude or the crass. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm normally more of the thinking I'm minister man's. for smut. Yes, you are. You're, you're the, the thinking man. People who like thinking, uh, you're their favourite. And people who like um, raw, deep, dark, sexual charisma, they're into me. With your little pink mug. <laughs> ah, bit of physical comedy there for you to start. <laughs> why oh. not? Sure, why not? Why not? Why not? That's hurting nobody. For people listening to the audio, I just dribbled all over myself. You missed it. Yeah, and most of the time he does that, it's unintentional. Yeah. He's starting to harness his inner cloud. Hey, the Hey, uh... But yes, long old... Do you find that the more tired you are, the more your libido kind of takes over in some way? Well, you're kind of... Well, sometimes I think your cock is like... Well, you know, it is like you dress your body is like I'm tired, and your cock's like, well, I guess I'll have to fucking run the operation now. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm CEO. You think that's what it is? Yeah, your cock you're, gets made CEO uh, of your, your body. Your cock's like I'm the captain now. That's right. It's like uh, <laughs> Captain Phillips, and your <laughs> cock is a Somali pirate. I know you haven't seen it. I know the reference, but you though. know the reference exactly. John, next time you know the reference, just act like you saw it. <laughs> act. It's about to say he looks a bit like you seen both. No, not at all. He does look like Usain Bolt. Yeah. Yeah, they're just very Why? similar, like, hairline. Yeah. And they're both, like, like black. <laughs> but they are, yeah. He looks like him. It's true. That's just a fact. I mean, like, you've said it. I agree. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, Let's move on. But, well, yeah, but no. that, so here's what I think about, because yeah. particularly when I'm, like, hungover, the libido yeah. really takes over. And I think there's some part of your brain that actually thinks you're going to die. Yeah. When you're in kind of dire straits and uh, it goes, we must pass on the seed. Uh, yeah, I think, I think you're right. <laughs> you think you're just close to death while your bassist urges just come out. That's right. Like firing on all cylinders. And, and I think it's like, so I think there's some, that it, yeah, in survival mode, like it is like, right, what, what mechanism or what, what chemical uh, stimulus now can we use to keep this cunt's body going? Well, I know something that'll keep him going. The horn. Make him as horny as a fucking skip. Yeah. And he'll be, he'll be out crawling under bins and fucking sniffing up fucking uh, stairwells. You know, like I'm, I was there, oh sure, last night. Well, I'll tell you now. But I, um, <clears throat> so I did my show. I know my voice has been absolutely fucked. Like even yes, I came to see you on what I would say was a, a rough old day for Mike. You could al almost not talk at all. I could almost not talk I'd at all. I'd say you were probably, at one point in the day, you thought, shall I pull this show? Oh, 100%. And then I looked at the amount of money that was on <laughs> the ticket sales column and how much it cost me not to do the show. And I said, I must do it for my art. <laughs> I must do it for my beloved comedy. That was like, my, my, I'm doing an extra one tonight and my mum was like, why are you doing another extra one? And I was like, mother. Mother, the cash. you weren't born yesterday. <laughs> the money, mother. I've got cookies to buy for it's folks. It's always the money. Um, no, uh, so that was it. Like, But also, I see, I cancelled my shows. This was my big mistake, right? So Tuesday, uh, I cancelled my shows because I'm almost certain I got COVID on Monday. Everybody um, has COVID Everybody's here. COVID. But everybody's I'm not fucking, fucked. I'm not testing because fuck that. I'm never testing again. That's my stance on COVID. I can have it a million times. I don't know, and nobody knows, and Apparently that's it. At one point, one in six people in Edinburgh had COVID. That seems fucking dead right. Uh, if anything, that feels low. There was a lot of sick sallies going around. Yeah, I absolutely. could see him snuffling, absolutely snuffling, and, and you know, uh, and acting like uh, you know that they were they were um, uh, under the weather. But so. Uh, this was so, so Monday I was kind of fucked. I could feel it in my neck. I was like, fuck, I, I like had a temperature and all this shit. And I was like, ah, Jesus, now I'm ready for the bin. So I looked at Tuesday. I was like, Tuesday, right. This isn't the busiest day at the Fringe. Mm. Fuck it. Cancel the fuck out of these shows. You know what I mean? Take it easy. How much the process are? Do you, do, does the, the Ed Fringe website, do they have like a method of you just going, beep, boop, boop, need to cancel the show? And they send emails to all the ticket holders? Yeah, well, what I do is I'll, I'll send a message first to the venue boys. I'll be like, hey, listen. 
Big Mike is fucking struggling here. And I used those words. I said, Big Mike's struggling. Big Mike's Big having Daddy. a struggle. Big Mike's got big struggles. <laughs> yeah, the chief has diarrhea. And uh, so I send that to them. <laughs> and uh, so they tell the venues. And then you just email Edinburgh Fringe and they fucking, they send out refunds. It's remarkably easy. It's remarkably it's easy. It's easy to cancel a show. Fucking say. so easy to cancel a show. Um, because they have, they get it all the time because people get fucking COVID. They get AIDS. There's a lot of things going around uh, at mm, the festival. A lot of AIDS at the festival. I think one monkey, in six people at Edinburgh has monkey AIDS Monkeypox. Well. Rachel Gould got, had monkeypox. Definitely. Yes, he did. Yeah. He has monkeypox. I came in there the other day. He was, I think he is monkeypox on well, some level. Well, certainly emotionally, he has emotional monkeypox or he's always had it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? A version of it. His soul has had monkeypox long before his body caught up. His soul is quite chimpish and it certainly <laughs> seems like that's his origins in the jungle. Um, but uh, so, uh, so people are sick and fucked. So the fringe have to be used to like, just right. What's the quickest way? Yeah, of so they just fucking send out all the fucking refunds. I was like, great. So Tuesday I just fucking, you know, stuck my head in uh, hot water and had 17 wanks and it was grand. So, uh, is then, that, huh? is it, you just go reverting to what you do when you're off school sick. Well, and just nobody else knows. You just absolutely uh, wank yourself. I made sure of myself. I've heard. I think I've like broken my cock to the level your cock is broken. Yeah, but sure, from just sheer fucking. Ad- Welcome to the an jungle. A- an addiction to myself, <laughs> a base addiction to my own member. You know what I mean? I couldn't stay away from myself. I was yeah, so yeah, yeah, I was yeah, irresistible yeah. to myself. Um, so anyway, so I take Stu's up now. Big mistake that I make. Right here's the big fucking mistake Mike makes. Mike. Uh, and I don't know why this whole episode I will be referring to myself in the third person it's the end of the fringe do you feel disconnected from yourself do you feel dissociated a little bit a little bit dissociated yeah a little bit of distance between your your your, uh, eros and your body is that the right word eros chakra is it I don't know, like your id and your ego oh, right. and stuff. Well, the, the, you're yeah, existing elsewhere. Don't basically. get my wires crossed now at this stage. It's too late in the fringe for too you late to, to be talking about to, the id, for, the yeah. ego, and the super ego. Or for you to just be, you know, trying to, you know, be philosophical. I don't need it now. Well, the problem, yeah, we just went to the awards ceremony, so I'm trying to seem intellectual because that seems to win your awards. Yeah, well. I, I don't know about that. We'll talk about that in two yeah, seconds. Yeah, but you're, but but you're, 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 so, you're so third I, person I take in yourself. Off, I take off the, the, Tuesday. the Tuesday. You take but the now, Tuesday off. Big mistake. What I should have done is take off Wednesday as well because I was still fucked, right? But anyway. So I, you've just half got yourself so fucked. I have got so myself, there was almost no benefit to it. That's exactly right. So I come back Wednesday night. Uh, and Wednesday, the two shows, right? I, I do the first show. My voice is kind of a bit fucked. Do the later show and just push through it. Uh, and I, I just fucking, I do the fucking thing, right? Now, after the show, uh, a fan of the Have a Word podcast, a lid, we would say. A lid. Yes, that's, a lid. That's one word I would use for them. Yeah, <laughs> what came up to me, baldy fella, uh, seems like he's a big fan of the Aryan race, and he came up to me and he said, he was like, listen lad, he's like, you want to do a stripe in the jacks, like of cocaine? Mm. And I said, yes. Why did you say that? Because I'm a, a, you know, I'm an agent of chaos because I have no fucking, I, I want this fucking lad to like me and I want him to think I'm a legend, big man, Michael do coke with you in the jacks. Yeah, just so he'll maybe buy a ticket again one yeah, day. Yeah, I don't fucking know. I just, what the hell, free cocaine, I'm no saint. I'll do it. I find it so easy to say no to cocaine. God's sugar, come on. I love it, I love it, uh, a drop do, in my we, tea. Can we practice this for, can we, for the next time? Yeah. M- Michael, I've just been to see your comedy show. Yes. Would you like to have a stripe in the jacks? More than anything in the world. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And we're friends forever and I love you and you love me. And this is just no, 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 no. You need to say no, thank you. Oh, be polite go again. about it. Okay, go again. Michael, I, I came to see your show, didn't really get it, but uh, would you like to go for a stripe in the jacks? No, thank you, is what I would say <laughs> if I had self love. But yes, I will go because you're my father, and we'll go have a stripe in the jacks. And by God, I'll get the love. I thought you were off the coke. Oh, sure, I was. I'm off buying it. I'm off buying cocaine. <laughs> I, I haven't bought any in a long time. But listen, this guy, this guy is being generous. He's offering me a strap in the jacks. So anyway, myself and himself huddle into a fucking cubicle like a fucking pair of gays in the 80s. And uh, he, he whips out a bag of Charlie and we fucking... 
fucking hoof up, hoof up half the bag into her, into her uh, nostrils. And then trying back out. And in my head, I was like, oh, my voice is fucked. I'll go home after the show. But now I'm after huffing half a bag of Charlie. So yeah, cocaine isn't good for self care. I don't think it doesn't really instill that kind of self love into kids. It's instill the, uh, not that kind of self love. It's a very different kind of self love that cocaine imbues you with. Well, like what, nobody does cocaine and go. I'm gonna have a bath. No, not at all. I'm gonna have a bath <laughs> and a stretch. <laughs> I'm gonna light some candles and watch the Gilmore Girls. You know, it's a different no. kind of narcissism. No, it, because it's a short term narcissism and the narcissism has to involve other people. Mm. Like I have to tell, oh, I have to spread yeah, the word. Yeah, more. We're gonna have a bath. That's right. We're gonna have a bath, <laughs> and while we're, we're in the bath, I'm gonna tell you about all my plans for the future. And why I'm great. Like, I think the cocaine makes you a messenger for your own greatness. Like, you're mm. like, I must get the word out yeah. about how great you're I am. You're flaring your personality. That's exactly right. Yeah. You're on the street. <laughs> Just <laughs> invisible flyers of I'm... Five-star fella. <laughs> yeah. 100%. <laughs> so I goes, I goes back and I goes out anyway and I'm full of, full of the evils of, uh, the, you know, the devil's fucking... Full of Colombian beans. Full of Colombian beans. And I come out and then sure next thing fucking And uh, was it even by your standards was it good cocaine? Oh no, not really. It was kinda of quite um Personally? Yeah, kinda of personally, kinda of speedy, just had you a bit like uh, you know what I mean? Like you're violently awake, but is there much joy dancing around your heart? No. No. No, joy is kinda of limping. Joy is after getting a, a after doing its fucking cruciate. Yeah. And it's limping around your heart. Now, so I'm out there then, right? There's a couple of Irish comedians there. Uh, that come down and uh, they're real booze monkeys so next thing I'm fucking hammering down pints and that's the worst thing the coke is not the worst thing if I just went to fucking bed after the coke I'd be grand after like a couple of things of it and like just I'd have to wait it out an hour and I'd sleep but the problem is coke keeps you awake to fucking booze and there ain't nothing worse for your fucking voice than fucking booze and the only thing worse than booze for your voice is being in pubs where there's music and talking to people loudly, loudly. Ah, da, da, da. that's right. the worst thing for your voice it's not the, the actual show or anything yeah it's just the oh yeah you fancy a drink do you next one oh, it it's just fucks you that's right fuck the next day that's absolutely right you can have right. a completely sober night yeah and just like cause you're just shouting over people in fucking three sisters or whatever fucked oh you're in ribbons you're in ribbons your voice is in ribbons your arse soul's in ribbons it's like Tom Waits the next day 100% you're fucking <laughs> yeah you're like a fucking I do like that the, the, cause New you're, Orleans you're past the singer. point where you, you like you like Yours is really, really fucked, but I like that little just day after boozing and talking loud in a pub. You do sound like Ronnie Drew. Yeah. I do like that. You know? You're sexy. You have a raspy yeah. kind of little voice. Um, but so anyway, so I goes out and then we're drinking. Then we end up going down to the Brooks Bar, which is just, you know, a little fucking slug fest where there's little chihuahuas sniffing Frey, at each other's assholes. Reptilian bar, industry bar. Absolutely. Where all the cocks go to cock. That's right. There's people sucking the dirt from under each other's toenails. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, just kind of rotten. But try going there and I'm full of coke. So I'm a fully fledged lizard myself. Mm. So I go in. We're You're in making there. deals. That's right. And I just find myself in there. And uh, uh, at one point I'm nearly... Uh, fighting one of my friends I don't know what comes up it starts mess fighting and then like you know I don't know if that ever happens where it's just like and then we kind of got in a little like arm bar thing mm. like where we're like that with each other's arms and then he kind of put a bit of force on my thing so then I went Rrr. you know like I really like turned it and he was like Jesus what what, what are you doing and I'm like what you are took you it doing? beyond the point of play yeah took it to the point where like put over the right you found the boundary yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. that's the problem with play fighting yes it is one wrong move one and wrong then move. there's real tension well if you hurt if one person just pushes one thing too far and hurts the other person a little bit now suddenly it's like that ego ego fight or flight animal instinct now you're like what the fuck yeah, yeah I'm yeah, on a trip yeah, fuck you yeah yeah, um, yeah yeah so there was a bit of that at one point I did, I grabbed him by his throat, but in a kind of half messing way, but I was like, God, I'm out of my mind. I don't know what's going on here. But anyway, then, then I found myself like in a corner with this, like some girl, like who's like starting comedy. And I was like, just like this, like where I was like, you need to go out. You need to get on stage every night. You need to. You're a fool, my girl. You need to. And she's like, but what about my family and friends? Get rid of your family and friends. They don't matter to you anymore. You get on stage every night. You don't look at your mother. You fucking cut your dad's cock off. You need to become... 
a comedian. <laughs> have um, a weird Freudian inspiration. Yes, absolutely. I tell her to cut her dad's cock off. And I was just, <laughs> and you could just see the fear in her eyes. I could just remember yeah, the fear in her eyes like this. And I was like, ah. You need to write God, every day. I bet she quit comedy oh, the next day. Yeah. I hope so. Just being like, oh, just like some like real like doe-eyed, naive young comedian lady. That's right. just like, um, Mike's doing pretty well. Should I ask him about it? And you're just like, ah! yeah, just couldn't like it's it's. I am observably doing badly. You're like you know Harvey Dent in the the dark, is it Dark Knight Rises where one he's in uh, and he's in the it, hospital bed and he's, like, he's, right. he's lying like this and yeah. the, the <laughs> your man taps him. This is you. You're, you're Harvey Dent and then the nice little comedian lady yeah. just taps you on the shoulder and you just go rah and it's just half your yeah. face is just melted ah. with the, <laughs> the scars yes. of the war that has been your career thus far. That's right. Um, <laughs> I was doing gigs in Villanova. <laughs> in Riga, Latvia, Lithuania. You want to go there? You don't want to go there. You'll never come back from there. You've never gone behind the Iron Curtain. I've never returned from Villanus. <laughs> I never returned from Lithuania. You hear me? Um, so I just ruined her night for a bit. I remember doing that. And I tried to fight one of my friends. And I was like boozed away. And at this point, I'm full on sick as well. And even at the bar, my, my voice is fucked. So... I'm there, I'm doing all this fucking uh, nonsense. I get up the, the next day, you know, and I'm just like, Joe, uh, <gasps> and you're like, <gasps> yeah. you wake up reading, and I'm like, I'm like, so what day is this? So you take, <laughs> this is you, Thursday. You take so, Tuesday off, you go back Wednesday, Wednesday. just about scrape through on Wednesday. I Thursday, did. you think the best thing is to just go out in the No, tear. no, no, Wednesday night, I go out. Wednesday on the tear, Thursday. It was so dumb. It was the dumbest thing I've ever you done. You just undid the day off. I did. And you didn't get any of the money. But, but also undid way, and I did... Way more than undo it. I completely compounded it. You know, I went net zero on rest. <laughs> no. So I wake up Thursday <gasps> and I'm like, hello, hello, voice <laughs> gone. So I'm like, my voice is gone. <gasps> I'm like that. I'm just like, it's just, Thursday when I saw you. <laughs> yeah. Oh so God, now I'm just yeah, getting, you weren't in a good way. So, so now I'm just getting flashbacks of me, like just this frightened girl in the corner of me, you know, and just like me grabbing my friend by the neck. I'm like, Jesus Christ. And I can't like talk. And I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. And you know, that's just the self-hatred so high. It's like, you stupid cunt. Like I'm going into the last weekend of the Fringe. Like a lot of my shows are like already sold out. Now you have no voice. Yeah, use. for the people who were the most excited to see you. Well, don't say it like that. They were they the, these weekend ticket buyers. They I bet they bought the tickets much further in advance than the people who were there on the, the your Wednesdays. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, these yeah. weekend. Well, when hey, did they, when hey, did this hey, weekend hey, sell hey, out? Hey, Three hey, weeks ago, hey, something hey, like that. Hey, hey, oh, they're oh, buzzing about it. Hey, hey, they hey, made plans hey, around hey, coming to see your show for some now. reason. Yeah, listen now, have I not? Am I not already expressing you're my half a man. You're half a man now. Did I not? You give them half a mic. But, 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 am I not expressing I already, that this I'm feeling bad? Yeah. So why are you trying to compound that? They're not even going to see my Christ. They're no. going to see my Rye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Rye. Oh, <laughs> oh hello. <laughs> because I think my voice is so gone, it is Asian. You know, I'm like, hello. Uh, well, <laughs> like, I have... I think if you get hoarse enough, you, you are from the sovereign nation of Japan. I think you've done enough coke that you've become Colombian. <laughs> hey, see. Hey, hey, see. Hey, see. <laughs> oh, hey, Holmes. You want to come see my show? You want to come see my show? <laughs> you want to some, see some jokes, Holmes? You want to laugh, homie? You'll come to my show. You'll see in the back, you'll laugh, homie. Like you'll never laugh before. <laughs> like you'll never laugh before. <laughs> Oh, lad, I'm fucked. Um, and that's why we can't... Well, so this is going to be the main episode and our Patreon is going to be our live pod um, because at two hours even of this now and two more hours of my show today would have me absolutely goosed. Fucked. But, yeah, fuck. But, okay, so then you saw me Thursday night, right? And by that second show on the Thursday, I'd already done my early show and just got through it, like, literally, like, da, ba, da, ba, da, like, talking like that. So by the time you came on that Thursday, that, <clears throat> because last night I got more drugs and different things and it was still very bad, but the sun, not you drugs, saw me. No, you mean Madison. Huh? You mean Madison. <laughs> yes. What did you no, do no, last no. night? No, no, no. Okay. Well, look, no. Okay. So. Uh, I, don't, I just don't know how you no, do it. Okay. So let, let me just. I've barely gone out this fringe and I am knackered. No, I know. I know. I know. But you're not allowed to say anymore, are you? Knackered? Yeah. No, you have to call it tinkered. You're tinkered. 
you're tinkered is the politically correct. You're absolutely caravan. You're absolutely caravan, lad. <laughs> um, no, you are allowed to say knackered. Um, but, uh, Some people say you're not, though. Yeah, but just say, shut up. <laughs> I did. I just said it and I didn't get arrested. So I am allowed to say it. Go away. Start, leave me alone. You know what I mean? I don't want to see you and you're uninvited to whatever this is. Yeah. Leave. Um, give me that scone and fuck off. Now. Um, <laughs> is it a McMillan coffee morning? Uh, yes. <laughs> give me that marmalade. You're not allowed any. No, fuck off. I can say what I want. You dirty prick. Uh, oh, but so then when you saw me, right? Thursday night. Yes, uh, with Jamali. Thursday with Jamali, with lovely Jamali. And uh, do you know what? I was delighted to see you because I needed some uh, moral support. But I, by that stage, my voice was, I was literally seating people. I was like, can you, so if you sit in uh, the seat there, that, that, that's what'll go up there. Like my voice was yeah. in shite. And that show requires a lot of act outs and stuff. Yeah. And I, it was <clears throat> probably the physic. it was the physically most painful show I've ever done wow. Thursday night I was in pain that whole show it was, it was incredibly yeah. incredibly you difficult you really muscled through I just I just like it's just like but it's like anything you will just do what you have to do yeah. if you had to run a marathon tomorrow or your mother was going to die you'd, you'd run a marathon through. you'd make it through it you'd would take ages but you, you would just make it through you'd just do it and that's it it was just like they've heard I'm here I just have to do it but it was like there was parts of it because you can feel the problem is as well because I was sick it's not just voice so it's like I actually had a cough I've like for, so what happens is fucking phlegm comes up into your throat and like coats the inside so then uh, your voice actually becomes muffled so you have to without the audience really noticing I had to <coughs> I had to like <coughs> cough up phlegm and try to swallow it back down as I was like doing the show, it was like you fucking were insane. Glued to your pint of water. Oh, glued to it, glued to it. Just yeah. like a little sucky calf. <laughs> but um, but I got through it. And it was good. Was, and it was grand. Like it's good. I can't <clears throat> believe that you haven't sorted out any of the lighting problems in that room. Yeah, it absolutely blows me away <laughs> that you've been doing a show in that room as it currently sits. <laughs> For a whole month. Uh, yeah, I know. And just haven't... You go, well, sure, the ven it's the venue's responsibility to fix it. And I go, right, but they're not. Yeah. So yeah, why are you suffering through it? Uh, lad, I just love hardship. I love pain. I love... I have a You're whole doing comedy with a weighted vest on. The whole room is lit. Yeah. But lad, I'm not joking. Now. I was more lit than you were, and I was in the audience. You were in the audience, yeah. But like, listen... Like, think about this, like, why did Cristiano Ronaldo used to do fucking step-ups with fucking weights on his ankles? Because then match day, you take the weights off, he's fucking killing everyone. Do so you think by the time you get, are you touring Hand of a Sinner? Yeah, but I'm actually, I am, that's just, it's actually complicated. What my touring show is actually going to be, my work in progress plus everything that's not going to be on my Best special. Both. No, no, the Hand of a Sinner stuff, like like the Trees and all the stuff, right, that'll be on my special, that won't right, be in right, the right. actual tour show. Um... Uh, so the it, what my fucking tour show will be is uh, best of my work in progress and other stuff that I can just fit in Great. to that narrative. But it'll be good. Like the, the work now, in progress is, is going good. This is my concern, and and yeah. there's, there's people watching here yes. now and listening here now who will go to your tour. Yes, and I I want you all to promise me. Yeah. That you're not going to offer Michael any drugs when um, he's on his nationwide tour. Now I know you're going to be against this. But the tour is longer than the fringe. The tour is longer than the what? fringe, and you have yes. to travel. Yes, you live about twelve steps away from your venue right now. Twelve steps? Is that something I need to get on <laughs> on board with? Hey, baby! Twelve steps away from sobriety. That's Michael's next show. Hey. Twelve steps to greatness. Oh fuck! Yeah, lads, you probably yeah. Don't, don't be doing that now. Don't be offering me drugs. Do you, do you have pencil dates? Do you know where the tour starts and ends? No, no, we haven't all that. We have, uh, I still have to. Finalize all that with uh, Tony, uh, my tour manager. But well, what I will say is, say you're starting in Birmingham and you're ending in Dublin just for talk's sake. Yeah. Birmingham, if you give him drugs, 
Just know that you're ruining B- Dublin's evening in advance. <laughs> so don't fucking, don't do it. Yeah, but fuck Dublin. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Birmingham. Let's party. Um, you're going to be, you're going like, to fucking Bert Kreischer yourself on the tour. You're going to go out with the whole audience for pints afterwards. No, 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 no. No, I'm going to. Michael. No, I'm going to be, by then I'll, I'll be, I'll be dried up sober. I'll be, I've written a book about recovery. I'll have, uh, you know, I'll go full Rus- Russell Brand. I'll Spring? Have, yeah, I'll go full Russell Brand. <laughs> I'll rape few people. I'll <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. Legally. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, fuck. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> anyway. Uh, whatever. Allegedly. Uh, Alleg- anyway. Allegedly. Allegedly. Oh, but then. So then. <laughs> but, lad, you. Um, uh, but so when you were at the show, could you properly, like, as the show is going on, could you hear how bad my voice is during the show? Yeah. yeah. What did you think happened? I, I don't know. I was just did like. Did you think you miraculously were talking normally? No, again? no, no, I didn't. But like, was it like. He sounded worse than this? Yeah, no, I was worse than this, yeah. But like, did. But like, what, like was it very like. Was it like, Jesus Christ, his voice is fucked? Yeah. All right. And these are people. There's a lot of pod fans at the show. Yeah, yeah. And these are people who. <laughs> they listen to you speak all the time. Yeah. And they know that's not what you normally say. Yeah, they know what I sound like. But the show still went grand. It was like, a good show. I yeah. just can't get over the lights. The lights were fucking dumb. But well, like, let's no right. We need but, to get to the bottom of this. I don't know right. to explain this. Right, the room is kind of like a weird, like part of a pub type thing. So there's like a section of chairs here, maybe like fifty people here. Yeah. So stage is over there. Yeah. Fifty people here, and then like maybe ten to fifteen here, and then another section yeah. of people just here. Yes. Even these people, the furthest back, had a fully lit separate area that definitely is on a different light switch. That's right. Well, now, no. now, what I've argued is that you should have chipped together with the other performers in that room and bought yourselves a, a spotlight. Communism. Yeah. I mean, that's... Stalinism. Just, yeah. But it, I mean, just making pop, pop, life... Mao. Making, Genocide. Making life a little bit easier for yourselves is what I would call it. <clears throat> and... I kind of knew that was gonna happen, wasn't gonna happen. But then I, I, I just think, turn off the lights that don't need to be on. Yeah, but lad, I, I'm just like now, and I, and I. Do you know where the light switches for those lights are? Why not? I don't think there are any. Listen, I think <laughs> I'll be honest. I don't think there are any. I think that these are. This is an eternally lit room, and I know that doesn't sound particularly there right. There is a light, and it never goes out. out. <laughs> and it's Marcy, at the back of Mike's comedy show. <laughs> Marcy writ a song about Beehive Venue Number One. There's a light that will never go out. He couldn't believe it. It just won't go out. Um, the I right tried to bomb the pub, but they still wouldn't go out. Listen, I. Uh, it's just no, look, ludicrous. It's ludicrous. Michael. It's ludicrous. It's ludicrous. But listen, what what I'm saying is this. <clears throat> I'm in there. It's well lit. Most of the shows, I'm still fucking not like getting that room uh, banging, and that room. But the whole time I was watching the show, I was just like, imagine this was at all a room where comedy should happen. Imagine the place would be falling asunder. It'd be unbelievable. Now, but the thing is, I've got it to that level on several nights. Even but though what is this? What was stopping you finding where the light switches are? I will say, do you know what I'll say? This it's just a complete lack of self-respect. Respect Sir, for the audience because it'd be better for them. I certainly, I certainly have contempt for them. Um, I find them, I find them quite. Uh, I've been in venues before where the light switches were all on one light switch, so I just go around and unscrew all the bulbs that I don't yeah, want to be on. Yeah, but you're an autistic dickhead. Now, what I want you to listen to. <laughs> Why is that bad? Believe well, you're not. Don't be fiddling with stuff. That's not. <laughs> I don't like that. Don't be fiddling with things, all right? Because next thing you're up here, next thing it's a child. Now this is it's it's a gateway drug. Bugs are a gateway. But a gateway drug to pedophilia. Yes. <laughs> and anytime I see someone fiddling with a light bulb, I say I ask around: Is there children in the building? If so, evacuate. Because I know what comes next. That fell in, although yeah. that, that fell in the Guinness Book of Records who eats light bulbs, he definitely is a pedophile. But the biggest pedophile ever, of course. <laughs> 
Where do you think you, if you're going to eat light bulbs, where do you think, like, where do you think that stops? Do you think? You know, because you just, uh, there's no line for you. There's no line. In any part of your life. That, moral, ethical, physical, nothing. Anything goes. I think it's the same part of the brain that makes you go, I shouldn't eat light bulbs. It's the same part of the brain that makes you go, I, I shouldn't, shouldn't fuck, fuck kids. kids. 100%. <laughs> and that part of the brain is gone. Right? But all, the way I look at it, a fiddler is a fiddler. Now, um, fiddler on the roof, great play. Pedo, though. Now, if I were a rich man, I would have an island on the road, children. <laughs> it was about Epstein. All day long, I yeah. diddy diddy dum. Yes. If I were a wealthy man. That's right, he diddled, diddled, he diddled. <laughs> now, it's right there, it's in the fucking song. Now, I wish I'd, I've said, do you know what? Rape is a very harsh word, and I, and I don't like it, and I've said it too many times you in this podcast. You have to say molest nowadays. I'm sorry. Yeah, molest or um, fondle. Or fondle, fondle vigorously. Seems too, fondle seems too nice. Fondle seems too fondle nice. Fondle has an implicit consent. Does it? As a fondle is kind of, a, it might be a nice thing to happen. Yeah. Is it? A lovely little fondling. Yeah. A merry little fondling. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, I wish you a fondle Christmas and but a happy we were, new year. But we were at the awards ceremony today. The, That's Ed, right. the Edinburgh Comedy, the, the DLT Sky Victoria Wood Comedy Awards yes. this year, as people, they are known. People that were winning um, uh, best show, best newcomer, and the panel prize. The panel prize. I hadn't been. I hadn't been no, nominated I, for anything. To get uh, and listen. You, there's not a show in the world that would be in that room and get a nomination. That's right. <laughs> With that lighting stage. With my lighting It's impossible. Stage. No, it's not. Because the amount of jokes, no one has more jokes, no old fringe. I think that's probably not true. It is true. It's like four bits. More tags then. <laughs> more tags, maybe not jokes, but like laugh lines. You know what I mean? You couldn't, you couldn't, I have more in, in, in my, this one show than you had in your last two. Fact. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like that? How do you like that, you stupid cunt? <laughs> which, you just which, said which, fact. Which, which, are, which are awards and your stories <laughs> and your meaning. <laughs> uh, um, people bullied me in a crowd. Vigo was being very complimentary about my show. <gasps> Vigo Venn, were Vigo you there Venn. today? But let's talk about the awards more broadly for a second, because earlier in the year, and you might have got this from when uh, the wonderful Nika Vigo Pen. <laughs> <laughs> Give me an award, you cunts! It's awful stuff. No, it's rotten. Yeah. Um, the yes. awards, more by you might have heard from Nika Burns, the wonderful Nika Burns, uh, head of the awards. Um, yeah, she's a nasty character. She's a nasty character. Remember what she said to you last year? Yeah, at the that nominations, you, she, she said yeah. that I could be very, very successful. I would just have to thin my accent a bit and shrink your head. <laughs> Did, was it too? Did that. she not say you the head? Head like a hot air balloon. No. She's afraid you're going to take off no. and hit the roof. No. No? No. Oh, who said that? <laughs> Is that me yeah. right now? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, a terrible person. But she did say, that was, that was insane. After seeing my show last year, it's absolutely ludicrous. That's She's, mental. Because your show is all about like... Mm, yeah, it's all about the Irish experience. Irish, it's so hard and to prejudice be. prejudice against the Irish people. So and the Irish sentiment. It's so hard to be Irish. Couldn't, be a, couldn't huge, be a bigger advantage in the world. She also called Huge Davies Phil Wang for the whole day when he got nominated. <laughs> Is she? That's good fun, though. I like that. Now she, I like her again. She said, you know, because you're Thai, and he said, you know, I'm, I'm Malaysian. And he went, you've got a Thai haircut. She says to Davies, <laughs> Is it because he has a. Like a ponytail. <laughs> is that is that tied? She said that's a tie. It's tied up. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. That's good stuff. Suit and tie. But anyway. Yeah. But she said so. She, she said, runs the awards. And this is the kind of bizarre thing about the Edinburgh Comedy Awards. They're not official. Right. In any way, really. With the government, you mean? No, I mean with like the Fringe Society the or like it's, it's not linked to the Fringe at all. It's right. just a random woman decided to set up the awards and she gets sponsors every year. Yes. And I remember, so they basically didn't have a sponsor Yeah. a couple months before the Fringe and everyone was like, oh no, are the awards not going to happen? Which I guess on first reading you go, who gives a flying fuck? Yeah. 99% of people aren't even like looked at for the awards yes. or anything like that. Nobody so, looked at me. And I was did, you never my have the, did you never have the panel in? Huh? Oh, I didn't have the fucking panel in. I wouldn't have let me in. There wasn't room. It was sold out. 
<laughs> I would have kicked him out in their arse because I would have seen him because it's well lit and I would have said get your fucking panel ass out of here God. I don't want it no but they didn't know so they, they didn't they have a sponsor did. right a couple months before the fringe and then yes. they did a big call out and I said oh we need a sponsor for the fringe and I read through the article yeah and the amount of money they need to run the awards is £150,000 whoa 150000 to pay for like eight or nine panel judges to go to like hundreds of shows all together, all this stuff, accommodation for all them, per diems for all the panel judges, all the award ceremonies, this, that and the other, blah, blah, blah. And I got, fuck that, eat. that seems high. I know it's a lot of stuff, but it seems high. And then you kind of look at all the different bits of it and then they like day one of Edinburgh, they go, we're having the the awards lunch. And it's at this like big ballroom and they've all got big tables and they're all being paid for for dinner and it's all these fucking cor- Fat cats. It's a gal- corporate whores. Yeah, it's this fucking gala dinner. Weasels. I'm like, what? Pedophiles. Well, that's, that's probably 20 grand that can go. Yeah. On that fucking dinner of like a hundred people being paid for for like a three course meal. And they're all eating fucking uh, uh, live pheasants. Yeah, and with like drenched in baby's blood and all oh, this stuff. Oh, fucking hell. The Clintons are there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course they are. They've always been a big fan of the fringe. Oh, um, lad, I was just looking at a clip that just came up on my YouTube. Best clip uh, ever from the 2016 election where it's like uh, Trump and Hillary. Mm. And I know it's just that famous one where like... Um, uh, like, like she brings up like him saying the grabbing the pussy thing, mm. and then like Bill Clinton is there like as well, and then like Trump just goes on to be like, "There's never been anyone who has done more harm to women in the history of this country than Bill Clinton. <laughs> We've got four of his victims sitting right here <laughs> that have come up. What he's done to women has been appalling. Just cuts like the bill, Bill just like, and just Hillary is just." It's just checkmate. Like yeah, you, just, you mess with the bull, yeah. you get the horns. He's Fuck like, sakes. He said, I'm sorry for what I said, Grabbing his head, but this is locker room talk, but these are words. He did actions to these women. It was really horrible stuff. It's just, yeah. ter- like, it's just insane. Well, because Hillary just says that and goes, there's no way he's yeah. going to go there. No, he there's can't. There's no way. And this is where everybody got it wrong about Trump. Yeah. He'll go He'll there. He'll go there. he goes straight there. Yeah. Fucking... Okay. Tom do, Daly do not, dive there. Do not pass go. Oh, go there, lad. It's so, but like you can. It's just like you can't believe this is a. You're like this is a presidential debate. This is unbelievable. Yeah. And then like Hillary comes up and she's like, well, she's like, um, I just want to say that what Mr. Trump said wasn't true. But to quote my good friend Michelle Obama. When they go low, you go high. And I'm here to talk about the issues for the people. And then, like, Trump literally goes, 33,000 emails deleted from her computer. <laughs> Where did they go, Hillary? Why did they go? She's a criminal. She's a criminal. Oh She's a crook. You know what I mean? She's so hard to beat. You're it's, just it's, like... Impossible. He's morally not there. There's no, there's no fucking battleground on which we can have this debate where everything's on the table to him. He's just like... But it doesn't. But she's like, let's. She's like, no, let's talk about policy he's issues now. He's like, absolutely man ever. not. He is, but like, also, he's like, a weasel, but it's great. But there is part of it that you're like, yeah, well, they deserve to be treated like that. They deserve to be spoken to like that like because the they are like, fucking shady cunts as they're well. They're absolute shady cunts. And then, when, in a way, it's like if Trump was just like a Don Rickles type character and he was just saying all this stuff, yeah, at like some kind of dinner or like the inauguration or whatever. Great. Yeah. This the problem is he is equally fucked, but he's just calling out the other side. And they're too little bitchy to not to call them out back. But then she goes, and then she goes, well, like, because he said something about her being like secretary or something. And she's like, well, uh, we'll see. Well, we'll see what you would do, Donald, if you were uh, if you were in um, office and you were head of this thing. And he's like, if I was head of the, if I was head of this office, you'd be in jail, you know. And just immediately <laughs> the audience goes, oh. <laughs> and it's like he just fucking just destroyed great, her. He's full of zingers. It's insane. He's full to the brim of zingers. He was just like cutting people's heads yeah. off. Yeah, he was absolutely quite on Jane Darth Maul and people. Um, but what was I going to say to you, lad? Uh, There's award stuff, right? Award so look, stuff. twenty grand on the fucking dinner, and then every <clears throat> nominee. So every yeah. nominee for best newcomer gets six bottles of champagne. Yeah. Every nominee for best show gets twelve bottles of champagne. Champagne's rotten, book one. I, I mean, it. yeah, I still have like two of the bottles in my house. I gave most of them away. And yeah. then you always feel like it has to be like a big occasion to have a bottle of champagne. Yeah. So it's just like, is this a good, like, is this a good enough thing? 
I think it's funny to do it for something small, like if you just had a really nice wank and then just just <laughs> bottle of bubbly and like get like invite everyone in and be like pouring <laughs> glasses. It was just great. Yeah, it was, um, a, it was a good one. <laughs> I, I I got the setting on the toaster just right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, absolutely. It's pouring it all over your mother. Um, so, so you get the bottles of champagne, right? So that's what seven or eight newcomer nominees, seven or eight best show nominees. Yeah, that's like fifteen grand of champagne. Yeah, it's like well, just don't give them. Yeah, don't give them the champagne. That's not what they care about, really. And then there's just the implication of like, well, if we're not going to do it properly, we're not going to do it at all. Then it's like you could do these awards for ten grand. What about homeless people? What about giving them? The <laughs> what about giving them the champagne? Give them the champagne, they're thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> they're mostly alcoholics. Give them the champagne. Oh, lad, so I gave a lad the other day, man, this homeless guy. Like He came up to me, he was like looking for money. And I just gave him, because he was a lot of cash at friends, so I just gave him five pounds. Like, And I, like, he couldn't have been more, like I knew he was going to do heroin. Mm. And I was like, you know what? Go do it. Well, the ra the real have some heroin. You yeah. need some heroin because if he don't get heroin, my brother's a social worker, right? And this is people all everyone's excuse, right? They're like, no, because if I give him money, he's just going to go and do drugs. First off, you don't know that for a fact. You're just a tight cunt who yeah. doesn't want to give a homeless person money. Yeah. Secondly, if he is a heroin addict, if he doesn't do heroin, he could die. Yeah. So. You'll be saving his life, you fucking miserable bastard. Also, Give him some heroin money. If that fiber, if that, if that fiber doesn't go to him, you're just going to roll it up and do coke later. That's right. So often these people, you go, you spend your money on drugs. Why can't they? That's 100%. They're doing what they want to do. 100%. They need a bit of help. Yeah. Sort it out. Do whatever. Com completely. Give but I, the but fucking these goods. fucking awards, it's so strange. And obviously, like, I don't did you know. feel, did you feel, you know, because you, you're an awards boy and you have medals and you've, um, you have little trinkets what? and, you know, you've got little, you've all. In what you, sense you, am I an you, awards you, boy? You have a little, like, scouts outfit I'm a, with all I'm your I'm a little, decorated, I'm not a kind decorated of like best, boy. Best man and fattest head in Belfast 2017 and you have all these awards and, <laughs> you know, you're, you're kind of, uh, win stuff and everything. Then you're at the awards. I don't win stuff. You I've do, never won anything. The egg and spoon race. Nope. 2009. Nope. No. <laughs> I was 13. Yeah. <laughs> That's not when you do You just put your head on a spoon, my head, you like. That's a fucking big spoon. That's a big fucking spoon. <laughs> so it's a pot. <laughs> uh, head in pot race. Um, but when you were watching the awards today, do you think now, hey, now, this is a load of shit. I should have been nominated. Well, it's an interesting little thing, and I really had a little dip. Did I talk about this in the podcast? Where the panel were coming to watch my show a few times early on, and I was like, "Oh, puke." No, oh, what's this? <laughs> and I was just like, "Oh, is this? Oh, you know, you just get in your little, you're like, because I, I'd convinced myself, and I said it last year. I was like, it's. I think it's reasonable to like kind of have hopes, hold your hopes for like newcomer. Yeah. Because it's not that many people are going for it. You know, there's only yeah. so many people doing their debut show and you can kind of go, oh, well, I'm probably in and around the conversation. Maybe this will happen. But then I even said it, I was like, but if you're holding out hopes for best show, it's just too many. Yeah. There's too many fucking people. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just the number of That's factors right. that are involved in that. It's such yes. an norm. It's everybody. Mm. It's everybody. Well, it's not really though. It's not really everybody. It's not me. There's no panelists on my show. For people that are, are you coming, sure? but no, there's not. There's no one coming to the free fringe. There's fuck all people come to the free fringe. You fucking know well that nobody's coming. The panelists, they, they, you know, they go to these other fucking paid venues. They don't come to where real comedy happens. Completely lit rooms. <laughs> <laughs> completely lit rooms by people who've done too much cocaine and their voices aren't working. <laughs> That's comedy. Yeah, they show up and go, this, this is where people care about the art. This is where people give a fuck about the audience and the fucking art form. Is me just being like, so I went to Wexford on holidays. <laughs> I went to Wexford on holidays. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! Um, but anyway, so you you were there. They, so there's all these things, but you weren't nominated. I wasn't. Uh, and when I was at the award show today, nothing was more obvious to me than that. 
that I wasn't nominated. Did you also see that when they were when they were announcing the best newcomer, like while they were made the build up to it, the winner just flashed up on the screen for a second? I didn't see it, but then I got told. Jesus Christ! Like that's awful. Yeah. Whoever's doing the tag, just you just don't press a button then. Like yeah. that picture can be late, but it can't be early. It can't be early. Like it can be really late. No. It can be after they've left the stage and be like, oh, that should have been up while they were on the stage. That's right. Nobody cares. No. But early? Early, yeah. That's bad. Absolutely, it's bad. And then it's just like the, whoever was doing the thing just kind of was, Ooh, came. Wouldn't it be funny if, do you know yeah. the way when uh, football teams are in the final of a tournament, they yeah. get like, and same with basketball teams, they get t-shirts printed? Yes. Uh, for when they for if they win yes like there's loads of like t-shirts of like uh, whatever like LA Lakers <laughs> NBA champions 2008 but they did like the Celtics one yeah and uh and sometimes people like get them before they get like destroyed in what is a, a colossal waste of money and clothes and fabric and pollution and oh my god like and whatever the sweatshop workers that yeah, made them. yeah the number of people who could do with like just Malaysians. a nice just a nice t-shirt absolutely you know and they're just well, like the homeless well, guys they, unfortunately they say the slightly wrong thing on them yeah pin Trump, wait, that's wouldn't bullshit. it be so funny if all the comedians bought t-shirts that said 2023 Edinburgh Comedy Award winner oh. and then they just had to fucking yeah put just them the put them in the bin I'd love that. They've got like hats and yeah. like rings. And oh, stuff. that'd be Wouldn't unbelievable. It be so funny if you got a ring for the Edinburgh It'd Comedy Award. It'd be, so, It'd be cool. so sick. Just being like, yeah, finally got that ring. Oh, I'd fucking love it. I'd be honest, I was in there. So we were in for like watching the Edinburgh Awards and we were in to watch Paddy and Dan and uh, our friends who were nominated. And, uh, and you go around there, you know, and it's just, I mean, it, it is just a, a, you know, packed room. Now, don't get me wrong, there's really great comedians and nice people in there, but it's also just every kind of fucking bloodthirsty weasel on yeah, the circle. Yeah, there is a lot of weasels. A lot of, a lot of agent types. Yes, a lot of fucking... A lot uh, of the worst people in comedy. Yeah, just fucking like... <laughs> You know, just sniffing around, being being like, uh, you know what I mean? Like they're just like, is there any talent I can so exploit in here now? Anyone's arse I can freshly lick? But anyway, we were in there and they were and they were bringing around food in the fucking place, which was nice. Like I see that was it. I didn't even see the screen because I was still in fucking scavenger mode. I was just fucking hard. Burp. Vegan Dude. sausage rolls that were awful. Oh, lad, don't get me started on those vegan sausage rolls. So there's this <clears throat> late people coming around with these fucking things with like rolls on them. And inside, what appeared to be sausages. And yeah. I was like, this is sick. They've nailed and this. And they mumble. They, they go, vegan sausage roll? Yeah, they go, vegan, vegan sausage, sausage roll. <laughs> vegan sausage roll. So I, anyway, I picked up. I was like, thank you for bringing sausage rolls. At least there's some bit of humanity in this room. Some yeah, bit of decency yeah, yeah, is going yeah, yeah. on. I bite into the fucking roll. You must be the fucking joking. are made of potatoes. They're potatoes, but like just not even good potatoes. Just rotten, some stupid spiced it's just potato. Ma mashed potato in a condom is basically what's happening. It's there. mashed potato in a jolly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a jolly filled with mashed potato, and they're handing them out. And then you've nowhere to put the thing, so you're just there with it. So just to get rid of it, you just you, put it into your own face. Yeah, you have to eat it. But you I tell become you, the bin. You become a bin. Well, now listen, I'm not. I'm no stranger to being a bin, and I'm often being a self-appointed bin. <laughs> but I will say, even this one, I did a real ignorant thing. I just I couldn't eat any more. I was furious as well. I was like, would it have killed you? to be bringing around actual sausage rolls, you fucking losers. Yeah, like, 150 grand. Yeah, and then like part of me was thinking like, okay, if they're vegan sausage rolls, like, you know, if they have the, the yin, they must have the yang, so there must be actual sausage rolls somewhere. I was wrong. There wasn't actual sausage rolls somewhere. Now, do you know what this is? This is fucking, that is political correctness gone mad because, no, it is. No, it is. No, it is. Don't, I don't want you sneering at this because this is a real point stop and a serious me. thing I'm saying. I will not stop touching you <laughs> and it'll be stabbing soon if you're not careful. I'm in a stabby mood and even when I was in the award, I, because I ate like this little fruit stick, put a very sharp point on it and I kept the stick and I was like, if anyone, any of these blood suckers try to fucking <laughs> come talk to me about Anton, they're getting stabbed in the fucking leg. Just get away from me now. I don't want to look at you. This is what Mike does when he's presented with the comedy industry. Yes. He just gets a small pointy stick. Yeah, and I arm myself. Stay back. You I don't, don't want any opportunities. You don't get any of our Patreon money. <laughs> back. You, back. Away. Shoo. None of it. We're keeping it. Sorry. Why didn't our live show get nominated for the award? For the award. I said some very racist things. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Come on, you pigs. 
So I was there anyway. I, was with, I had my little sharp thing. But I was thinking like, you know, because if you think about it, how many vegans are there? Now, there's a higher percentage of vegans in that room than is a good reflection of a normal population because there's just so many cowards in the room. But still, saying that, it's still probably... 20, 80. It's probably like 20% yeah. vegans, 80% meat eaters. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, the boys. so why the fuck would you have vegan sausage rolls and not actual sausage rolls? Why would you be catering to, to 20%? 20% you f- I mean, it, it is a good metaphor for the awards. Of course it is. <laughs> but it's, it's not, fucking BS. It's not best selling show who audiences enjoy the most. Yeah. It's most thinky goodness of the show. Most thinky good. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> What's the most nourishing show? What's the most nutritional fucking show? Fuck off, mate. Give me a sausage roll and have Paddy Young win the award. <laughs> he was the sausage roll. He was the real sausage roll. He's the roll. real mate. He's the He's real a meat. fucking hunk of mate. He's, He's a, a meaty boy. Meat. Meaty boy. He's a sexy bastard. Yeah. But um, anyway, I, I, what I didn't tell you was this. Oh, by the way, we should talk about Sam Campbell at the award show. Jeepers, the funniest man alive. So Sam Campbell's an Australian comedian who is the... the, the <laughs> Very, very possibly the funniest man uh, breathing on earth. Like, it's I've, crazy. It's crazy. I've never, he is, he's probably the most like fluent, like comedy force of nature. Like I've never been at a show that was funnier than his show. It's just part of him. Yeah, it's just, and it's just electric and it's relentless and yeah. he's just fluent a comedy like you know yeah. what I mean it's incredible yeah John Robbins was there with his note cards doing great yeah funny jokes bish bash bosh set up punch all yeah. this stuff nicely whatever yeah and then Sam is just screaming <laughs> just screaming <laughs> screaming accusing Guardian reviewers of being paedophiles yeah and then like and accusing just... the judges of, of the panel judges of like telling everyone who's going to be nominated and <laughs> telling them who came second and all this shit <laughs> that's, that's so funny that's so funny because just the other night like uh one of our friends Horatio was out in one of these fucking um, brown nosing bars and uh, he said he was with like some panel members mm. or blah 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 and like Horatio was just like he's like mate he's like, he's like they spill the beans they do they just they've had a few drinks and all they want to do is just spill the beans yeah yeah that's, her, that's their Horatio currency accent's insane, but beans anyway. is their currency for the month oh lad they're absolutely fucking hell. Beans on fucking toast, these concepts. And then September comes and the beans are worth nothing. They're worth nothing. You couldn't trade them for a cow. Absolutely not. The raisins. Because they're no longer magic beans. No, 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 They no. have magic beans for about a week and a half. That's right. They do have magic. They have little magic beans for a week and a half when they're relevant in society and the world and they're noticed as individuals. Society. The, yeah. These fucking, this square two miles. Yeah. And then the clock strikes 12, ding, and then like... The tonight, like now, as soon as the winner gets announced, yeah. they have no more beans. Oh, I'm going to beat the shit out of half them tonight. <laughs> I'm going to beat the living shit out of them. I'm going to get a wrench. Um, I don't know where I'm going to get the wrench, but by God, not many of them will be walking tomorrow. Yeah. I'm going to, I would love that, to like like put a few of them in a wheelchair. And then they'd love, but they'd love that then. That's more magic beans for them. Yeah, yeah, being, yeah. Being, being like beans. fucking, oh, like an affliction is big time beans. You know what I mean? Like just being like. Big time, what do you think your magicest beans are? I'm sure I don't have an affliction. I'm fucking like, what? Like, is there anything wrong? I'm you on antidepressants. Have... That, that's my beans. Do you know what I mean? Little sertraline beans, sertra beans. Yeah, sertra beans. <laughs> <laughs> so like, that's my that's my magic beans is that I can be like I'm sad, but but I'm not because I'm on antidepressants. I'm actually absolutely buzzing. So, but that would be my beans in terms of like because everyone has to have their little affliction now. Like you have, I mean you've you're loaded with them now with your fucked cock, your fat head, your autism. And, and sure, what did it get me? Didn't even get nominated. <laughs> no, that's fucking sad, man. But I you, broke my own cock for a nomination. Actually, I didn't talk about that in the show. That'll see, be next year's. Next you, year's sad bit. My dick stopped working. My dick stopped working. Lad, you, <laughs> you should be leaning on the dick stuff. You should be leaning. You definitely, I mean, you should come out. Like, yeah, I, anyway, it's up to you, but I, you should come out as a woman. A woman? Because you look kind of like a woman. I think that I posted a little picture that... Uh, uh, my girlfriend made of us in this like little Barbie land. Remember that poster? Mm. And I looked like Ken and then was you as a woman. And I was like... You mean when you got the AI to change me to look like Barbie? Yes. And in that picture, I looked like Barbie? Yep. 
Yeah, is that what you're saying? But they, 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 you know, the, the, you know, if the glove fits, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now, take it easy. I've got. I'm on antidepressants. <laughs> your not, beans are worth nothing my, here, sir. <laughs> your beans are worthless, sir. Huh? Absolutely worthless. <laughs> um, oh, you'll enjoy this now. So, you're a beanless fool. Go. On. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bean to your name, sir. You you go buy everything here, mate. You got no currency. My beans just turned to fucking little fucking cat droppings. Oh, these are nuts but pebbles. <laughs> these are nuts <not> pebbles, sir. <laughs> Worthless, yeah. Get out of here, boy. Pebbles in tomato sauce. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've been done up like a kipper. <laughs> <laughs> I can't because it's done in tomato sauce. No, it's just a phrase. The fish. Is it? Don't look like a kipper. Sister or kipper, I think. But is a kipper a fish? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Jack Kipper. Anyway, there's a guy called Jack Skipper. So it was, <laughs> it was good. I love, my favorite thing about you is like sometimes you'll like people will do a joke that is like kind of complex, complex or it's like an in-joke or whatever. And then once you explain it, you go, oh yeah, that is really, really funny. But you just go Jack Kipper. And then your explanation because you're your joke is too like uh, nuanced for too many people is um, there's a guy called Jack Skipper. Yeah, that was for them. So they'd know that was a great joke. The Jack <laughs> Kipper joke. <laughs> Fuck this shit, all right? It's come to the end of the fringe. We're not well. Now, this is the last thing I'll tell you now and the last thing you deserve to hear. Mm. So last night. Beans. Last night <laughs> I was, um, I came out full of beans. There's a comedian uh, uh, he, I did like open mics with way back in the day and he had a very funny thing about uh, being a vegan. And yeah. he said, and that ties in, you know, very good podcasting. He said, um, he'd written a poem about being a vegan. Uh, did it just go, I'm gay? No, <laughs> no, no, the no, end. no. That's implicit in poetry. Uh, the poem went, Beans, beans, the musical fruit, the more you eat, a shit blood. <laughs> I just always thought that it always got an applause break. It's always so funny. That's great. That reminds me of... Uh, that bit in the talking funny with Louis and Seinfeld and Chris Rock and no, 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 cause cause I'm gay. Ricky yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gervais is like, no, but it's funny because it's not funny, yeah. and everyone else is like, no, it's just, it's just, just funny. It's just funny. It's a good bit. So Ricky's trying. But what Ricky's trying to do there is just try show how somehow in this context uh, he display has his intelligence. Tell you what, Ricky had in that interview. No beans. No beans. No beans. No, the beans were... It was a round table that should have had sauce. three people. That's right. And potentially should have had someone instead of Ricky Gervais. 100%. Little bollocks. That was part of That was part of my, oh, Ricky's a fucking idiot realisation. Yeah, and it's very evident that he produced the show. Yeah. And that's why he's there. That's right. Even though like Ricky, because it came, went from Ricky for 10 years, is a genius mm. and the funniest man ever. The Office is the funniest. I even saw someone... Just post a video the other day. It's still amazing just how many people are still doing David Brent. Mm. Like mm. just still, mm. they're so influenced, but it's so derivative. Yeah. And it's so like, yeah, you, we yeah. have to come up with something new, lads. Yeah, we've done the cringy middle-aged guy. Or just the, the, It's happened. Although the Australian office is coming out and it's, it's a woman is the David Brent character. Really? Played by Felicity Ward, funny comedian. Go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm interested to see what that's going to be like. Because it's nice. I think this is the next step of like equality is like not all female characters on TV have to be like strong and like cool or whatever yeah. like they can just be cringy in the same way it's funny that a male character was cringy yeah I do think but it's just like can we get like get an original character like yeah, do we need true. to you see don't, you don't have to do the fucking do we need to see where does it end we're doing oh what's next uh, the Antarctican office yeah <laughs> just in, <laughs> someone doing this dance in an igloo <laughs> it keeps bumping into the yeah. ice yeah <laughs> fuck's sake uh, <laughs> but last night after my show there was a few lads uh, Northern Irish heads in and I was going home and my voice is fucked and I felt like and what did they offer you beans cocaine they said cocaine beans do you want some cocaine and I said ah no yeah go on so 
I went and I did. Did you actually? I did. So I went to the toilet. And Last I, night. I wasn't even drinking. Mike. I went to the toilet and did a big pump of cocaine and then came straight home. Why? <laughs> I don't know. What do you want from these people? I don't know. I just thought they'd think it was cool. And uh, and because like... Your show's good enough. You don't have to do coke with them afterwards. <laughs> I do, I do. And because uh, we're buddies and we love each other. So I went and I did... <laughs> I did the coke and I came home and I had, I think it might have been a 50 minute wank. I like, I was like, I was like, um, I was like, it was like I was in Vietnam. Like I was just like, you know, there was just, <laughs> there was just steam coming off me. I was in a pool. I was like, ah. <laughs> you know, it was, it was like violent. Like my cock is fucked. And my cock is like, as bad yeah, as you have done, you've done coke and are on antidepressants. I know, lad, you're having a hope of coming. But lad, I got it. Like, and when I came, it was like, ah. It's like, why? Like, why have being... you ended the podcast like ah. this? Why have you done this? This is so awful. <laughs> like one in the morning. We like, come to quite a nice. I, we did a whole thing about I, beans. I could, and it was still, great. I could still hear the people like because they're out like partying like on cocaine. I just at home after doing a bunch of coke in my bed, no drinking whatsoever. I took a load of like Panadol and like little like throw medicine and then I goes ah. <laughs> For like an hour, an hour of just pulling myself asunder. And then I reached a state of glorious ecstasy. And I went and I talked to Gandhi and Martin Luther King and all the greats. Let's plug the Patreon and stop the episode. The Patreon episode this week is going to be the live (laughs) podcast from the start of the Fringe where you will hear, I would think, a notable difference in our energy levels. (laughs) It's from the 5th of August. It is currently the 26th of August today. So yes, 21 days ago, we did a live podcast of the Edinburgh Fringe. Uh, it was really, really fun. Really fun. Please uh, sign up to the Patreon to uh, access it and do not tell anyone all of the things that we said on the no, live don't, pod. Don't, don't. That's not good. Bad stuff. That's bad stuff. <laughs> like, that's it. Yeah. But actually, no, because there's going to be some little worms that want to see our demise. They'll sign up for the Patreon just to see that. And then, like, ruin our careers. So, actually, there's not any bad stuff on it. It's all very wholesome stuff. With me, Mike, and Adam Rowe, as you would expect. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, look after yourselves. Patreon.com forward slash parenting. Have a good one. Um, Oh, my my special will be coming out in September. I'm not exactly sure when, so keep an eye out for that. Mine should be in September as well. And my tour will be going on soon in September as well. So keep an eye out for those. Catch you soon. Bye-bye, folks. Bye-bye, bye-bye.